Hello guys and welcome back to The Sim. In this episode I'm hoping to finish the DIY MCP concentrating on the buttons, switches and LEDs. Now for the LEDs we're going to need resistors and I'm using 220 ohm resistors. You're going to see me now create a resistor pack with quick release connections. Now you don't need to do this, this is just for me so I can take it all back apart use the resistors for future use and it's just a great way to connect things in and out nice and quickly. So let's head over to the workshop and get started. With the Dremel I'm just going to break each of the PCB links so the power has to go through the resistor. And that has produced two halves of the PCB joined by what will be the resistors bridging the circuit. Now all we need to do is fit the resistors and the connectors. And I have a special little helper to do that. Over to him. I want you to take the resistors off. I want you to bend the legs like so. Okay? And then just insert them through those two holes there like so, push them in and then just bend the legs out slightly at the back. Take another one, bend it over like so. See the little gold band on top? Need to leave a, leave a row and then in. So all the gold bands are at the top of the board and it makes no difference which way the resistors go, it's just that it makes it look pretty. Okay, if I could ask you to do that now all the way along the board. Touch the leg, apply the solder, only a little bit, and lift off. So we've got these connectors, and hopefully we're going to slide these into the board, okay? And they're going to go... They're a little bit tight, but that's good. So there's one. I'll use the short one in the middle. And there we have one soldered resistor board. Flip it over. And as you can see from this side, it looks very neat. That's the resistor board complete and I can't remember who but someone suggested getting an Arduino shield with the same type of connectors on and that will hold all the wires nice and securely. So I'll get my son Josh to solder all this up. I think all you need to do is line them up and push them through the holes. like so. Clean the tip, solder. Now this time, just touch the, the board and the pin, apply the solder, you'll get it see sucked into the hole and release. I'll do the one the opposite end, and away she goes. This time we don't want to try and leave it on too long, because it's a different type of plastic and it's prone to melting if it gets too hot, okay? With the Arduino shield and resistor pack ready to go, next up is to connect every button, and every switch and every LED and I'm going to daisy chain the ground to each unit. That's the grounds all daisy chain for both the buttons, switches and LEDs. Next up I'm going to use pink, the 17 wires here for the 17 LEDs. And 
and there's 22 grey wires for every switch and button on the MCP. That way it's nice and easy to distinguish between the two kinds of devices. Back to soldering. We're back in from the CNC workshop. All the soldering is done. We now have about 67 wires, I believe, to wire up into the two Arduinos. That's what this big mess is here. And we also have our quick release resistor pack. Now, obviously you don't need to do this. This is just so I can quickly use these resistors for anything. It's like a prototype board for me. And same as these Arduino shields. You wouldn't actually use these on the real thing. Well, these are quite expensive compared to the standard Arduino shields where you just plug the wires straight in. However, for me this is ideal because it allows to connect all these connections up and then I'll be able to remove them and use them for something else later on. With that said, I think it's time that uh, I've got my screwdriver in my hand here and start attaching everything and bringing this unit to an end and back to life. As you can see, we've got the various colours. And the first thing I'm going to connect up is the ground. We've only got one ground now because I've connected them all together in a daisy chain. It's black and it can go into any of the grounds on the Arduino. Let's try it that way. And it went in that time. So there's the ground to the MCP connected and now this wire is the other ground, it's a bit long so let me just shorten it down a bit. I'm going to put this into the ground of the other board. So everything is connected ground wise now. Next up we have the seven segment displays. And they were pins 45, 46, and 47. Well, that's much easier. And as you can see, they're quite secure as well. So I'm hoping it's going to be much better. Next, we should have to 5 volts positive. And that goes in there. It's nice and secure. I've just finished wiring up into the two prototyping boards. Whoever suggested them, I'll have to look back and see who it was. They are absolutely fantastic. Only one drawback I've got, and that was the cheap wire. I've got two kinds. The pink stuff is the really good stuff with, uh, I'm going to say, at least 10 strands of wire inside it. And this grey stuff and the black stuff that I used have only got three strands. So it's very fragile. I wouldn't suggest using that at all. But as this is just a demonstration piece, it's, it'll be taken apart and certain parts will be thrown away. So it makes no difference. As long as I don't knock it, it should be good. Moment of truth, let's start maybe flight and just make sure that everything that we had working works. To click, there we go. So we've got zeros, 100, zeros, 100 is blank, and zeros. Well, seven segments seem to work, that's always a good start. Quick check of the encoders. I'll come back to the vertical speed because I need to push the Flight director on, VS on, and then turn. Perfect. So we are exactly where we left off in the last episode. Time to start programming. So into extras, into settings, mobile flight modules, and um, first module for me now. Select it, 
then they're going to add device and it's going to be a switch which is going to be a button and it is on pin 2 which is correct and that is MCP bolt hold now I'm both going to stick with those four inputs I'll continue inputting the rest and hopefully speed this process up That's all the buttons programmed. I'm going to upload at this point here because I make a mistake and lose everything. So hit the upload button, I'll wait a couple of seconds and then I will start on the indicators. Here we go. Add device, this time it's going to be an LED output and select 28. Output. So we've told Mobifly what's connected on those pins, what devices it's leading to. Now, into ProSIM and enter all that data, all the offsets required. Up into config, configuration, combined config, all the way down to MCP throttle, and we're starting with the switches. Scroll down, so we're looking for all MC Alt pushed. I'm going to select FSU IPC 8 bit and signed. And it's 5300.0. The next one, MCP Alt Int pushed. 8 bit unsigned. And this one's going to be 5300.1. To stop you from getting bored, I'm going to enter all the data and hopefully speed this up. That's all the switch data inputted. As you can see we've missed lines out because that's because we're only interested in the pushed values and not the off values. The reason for that is every bit can be either 1 or 0 so that one line contains the off or on code. So now that we've finished with the switches, I think if we scroll a bit further down and it's the indicators we select now, we just enter the data before. It's still FSU IPC 8 bit unsigned and the code I'm starting off with now is 5303.2 then we've got hold, this should be quite quick this time 5303.3 this is the last bit in the byte 5303.7 and now it switches to 5304, 5304.0. Now we repeat. That's the switch is done very quickly. I'm going to hit OK and head over back over to Mobile Flight and program the lines. So switches are inputs. Heading over to the inputs tab, I'm going to stop Mobile Flight from working at the moment. There we go. And then edit a new line. MCP Alt Hold. Hit the edit button, select Mobile Flight Mega Board 1. It's going to be MCP Alt Hold, FSU IPC Offset, and we're going to enter 5300. Size in byte is 1 is correct. And if I type in 0, 1 in there, is that correct? It should be bit 0. It is and I'm going to put a value 1. So when we push it, it enters the value 1 which is on and then on release, FSU IP offset, it's 5300 again, it's 0, 1 and this time, on release, we're going to push 0. Hit OK. You can guess what I'm going to say now and that is duplicate the line and just edit the data we need. So, duplicate line and this is called alt int pushed. Alt int. Hit the edit button. Change the device. Alt int. And of course it's bit one now. Over to 
FSU obviously on release and again we're changing the 0 to 1 because it's bit 1 and we hit OK. That's the switches all programmed in Mobifly. Switch over the tabs to the output and I'll carry on with the LEDs. Just a word of, a word of warning, make sure you get the values correct on every single one. If you don't get it correct, you're going to get some horrible results of cross modulation of digits. If you switch one switch on, it might do something you're not expecting. So just double check and take your time when you enter the data. Set the outputs tab. Scroll down so we want to add a new line. This time it's going to be MCP Auto Throttle. Edit the line. Our offset is going to be 5303 and our bit will be 2. Deselect the rest, press OK. This time we go to Display, Module, set the first mobile flight board for myself and then it's going to be a pin and it is indeed pin 28 and now when I click test we should see it highlight on the MCP. Boom! For winners. Click OK and it was that simple. Activate the line and then duplicate. With the unit all wired up it's time to push run and see what happens. Brilliant. Okay, so let's try the flight director switch. This should come on and we should see a green LED. That's pretty cool. Let's try the auto throttle switch. That's good. If I push the N1 button now, that works as well. We should be able to do heading select as well. That looks good. Let's turn the vertical speed button on that highlights and switches on the display, that's brilliant. And a quick check of the encoders. All working. So with the M1 push, let's try the CO button. Let's try the heading select button. Yep, that works. The encoder, perfect. VOR lock. Localize that, that works. Let's try altitude hold. Yes. And vertical speed should bring on the display, and it does. And that brings us to the end of another episode. The DIY MCP is complete. It's been a great refresher for me, ready to build my HISPA panels MCP. Now, if you believe that when I pushed run, this thing works straight away. Let me tell you, no it didn't. I have never had so many problems. And I'm going to discuss this in the next episode. Hints and tips on the MCP. Because I must have had every single possible problem when I hit that run button. And most of them were just simple things that hopefully we can cover so you don't make the same mistake as I did. Until next time, I'll catch you later guys, sim out.